Friday, time for another roundup of news on what happened this week and a few of the updates of the things that I already explained through, during the week on their individual videos, but features that got a little bit better since the release of that video. I usually publish like as soon as the, uh, as the feature is added. And then of course, with uh, the more you use it, the more you start tweaking it, then um, it gets a bit better. For example, this week, uh, one of the features, the main feature was wireframes. So yes, you can have wireframes, um, but in, in, Bl in Blender basically, you can have the same way uh, you have the wireframes overlays into point uh, seven, you can have them right now. But there was a feature that was missing is that, for example, when you have a mesh and it's completely uh, planar, it's completely pl like a plane, um, in 2.7 you could say, okay, if the angle is less than a certain angle, it's not completely plane, uh, planar, then you could you would not draw the, the edges. So in Blender uh, 2.8 until a few days ago, you will see all the wires. Now, it's not only, before you had to say, uh, it was a setting in 2.7, it was called draw all edges. So what's better than draw all edges or not draw all edges is a slider, of course. So uh, by default, the slider is in one, so it will show all edges and then you can, no, I think the slider is 0.5, so it's gonna show half of them. So now, I don't know if you can see it, but it's, super awesome because then it means that it can draw all of them or it can fade and, sh and draw a certain percentage of them. So that is pretty nice. Another uh, um, improvement in the wireframes that you probably don't notice but it's, a, it's an optimization is that uh, now the Blender is not uh, drawing the wireframes that are outside of the, the, the view that wasn't uh, implemented yet. So now it is. And uh, that's that's for wireframes. It's, I think it's a great great feature. Um, until the, in the beginning of the week, there was a, a slow performance hit when it was less than a one, but now that has been fixed. So good on uh, Clement for fixing that. And in the same area, in the in the viewport, we have the matcap. That's a new feature that was added a few days ago. I already made a video about it. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. But Basically, uh, matcaps, yeah, you can have custom matcaps. But when I made the video, you will have to make a folder in your settings, and it was kind of uh, cumbersome. So I promise it will be like a better way of doing it, and now there is. Still, once we have the asset manager, the mice change, but for the time being, at least you can, from the selector, uh, selector of the matcaps, you can just click on plus, and it will bring you to a new section, a new tab in the um, user preferences where you can just specify and add your own or even remove the ones that you don't, you're not really happy with. And in the, you can also do that for the world HDRI and the camera HDR. So what is the difference? The camera HDRI is attached to the camera. So when you move around, it will follow. So for example, highlights and everything won't be affected by the, um, the angle that you're watching it. And the world HDRI is just attached to the world, to global coordinates. So when you move the the, the view it won't be affected. And um, that's why there's the separation. And we, we are planning on adding an icon <laughs> to them. So when you're studio lighting, for example, here you, you could have an icon uh, to tell which ones are, for example, this one is camera, but you don't know. And uh, there, this one is the world because it shows the studio light, the rotation slider, but there's no way to know right now. So um, we, we plan on making that a bit more clear. So that is with the user prefs. It's pretty, I, I think it's a better way to, to add it. Again, when we have the asset manager, it's going to be even better. But for now, you can just install, search for a picture, and then it will show up here like anything, basically. It will just show up as a new texture um, in here, and you can remove it, of course. And a new feature that was added today by Jorun Bakker, the developer working on the Workbench engine, is that you can not only uh, load your own matcaps, but you can also flip them. Because in it's very common that the matcaps usually have like the lighting on one side of them. So for example, yeah, this one has a little light here, like a reflection. And um, when you're painting, and again, painting software, it's very common to flip easily just to, to see the, the, de the details, the, the shape of your whatever you're drawing in a different uh, 
yeah, in a different angle. So this option, I think it's uh, pretty useful because it flips and it lets you see with the same matcap without having to add a new one with a different lighting. So I think it's pretty cool. Then I um, think that's all for the studio and the matcap stuff. There were some other improvements and like um, fixes overall, but it's matcaps are going doing really well. There is a call for content. If you missed it, don't make sure you check it out. There is a lot of things uh, being posted there. So if you want to play with the matcaps provided by the community, like uh, Wasu um, and <clears throat> and others, they are doing a great job. And um, some of them are very experimental. I don't know if we should try to cover all of them. We should maybe try to post the ones that we really are going to use. Like if, if I, what is the ultimate matcap for me, for example, that kind of things. Let's not try to cover all the, pos the possibilities, but um, just try to, to focus on the ones that are really useful. Like this one, for example, is pretty neat. It's different from the rest. It's some sort of anisotropic uh, um, lighting. This one with scratches. So um, I think it's really promising. And uh, somebody mentioned that it was a bit of a overkill to have, because one of the requirements is that it should be an EXR. And uh, with that uh, big um, bit depth, so a lot of colors, 16-bit colors. And uh, I read like, uh, ah, yeah, the PNG is enough. No, we want to have EXRs because it's future-proof, because we can downsample them and, and uh, it could be in our control how to how to downsample them. And also, in the future, it would be ready when Blender supports HDR screens, for example. It makes a difference if you have, right now it doesn't, like if you put a, a JPEG and an EXR, it will look the same. But if we have the EXRs, it means that in the future we can, uh, Blender could use the HDR viewport and actually show it, display it there. So there are reasons why we're asking this. So that is pretty neat. Speaking of neat, I'm going to uh, show off a little bit of this file that uh, was provided by Daniel Beistet for the developers to, to play with it. It's pretty awesome. And another feature, well, more than a feature, more than a few of the changes that were done during this week was that the um, Pi menus are being tested right now. Um, it introduced a few problems because Pi menus, uh, the way they're implemented in 2.7, they work. But the problem is that it, it kind of makes slow every other key in Blender the way they're implemented. Um, because it, there is a difference when you press the key. It's a very technical, but it's a difference when you press the key, when you hold the key, when you release the key, all of that kind of stuff. So the implementation now is trying to be a bit more clean. And basically, the changes that are being tested right now is that you to go to edit mode, you guessed it, you press tab. So you tab in and out of edit mode. And if you want to uh, change the mode, you just hold tab and then go around and you find the familiar pie menu that everybody is used to. So or a lot of people are used to. So there are a few things that need to be fixed. For example, you can't uh, hold and click in one of them, that, that should be allowed. It wasn't possible in 2.7 either, but I think it would be a good improvement because if people are going to find this, this the, um, the first experience with Pi menus, then it should be more friendly. Um, then uh, we're also trying to limit the Pi menus to be just one level, not nested, not like you click and goes away. Uh, or you have another nested and then inside of the nested level you have you no. Know, Pi menus uh, should be a one action thing. It should just like be fast. You read it once, okay, up is weight paint, here is object mode, okay, I remember. Hold up, hold side, and then it, just, it should be just fast. The same uh, we're testing with the uh, search. So um, search is, we're, we're testing it to be applied on the uh, tilde, and when you hold it, it will let you move around with the camera to the sides, and that way you can change the views more fast. So um, there are a few things that are being tested. That's why I didn't make a dedicated video for it, but 
just just to say that it's being tested. And when you are in edit mode, another change is that the uh, sub selections that uh, face select, I can open here in the top bar, um, is it with one, two, three, one, two, three. So you can just, as you see here, you move and three for face select, two for edge select, one for vertex select. And you can, of course, do shift three, for example, to toggle on and off the uh, individual uh, modes to, to combine them. So that's something that is being tested. And um, it's, it's proven to be very fast workflow. So that's pretty cool. Another thing this week, uh, sub panels were added. So that's also that is being uh, tested all over the place. Sub panels are being added everywhere. And not only that, but also in the properties um, editor, wherever you keep the properties. Um, last week, I didn't make a video about it, but I don't even know if I mentioned it, but there was an, another editor for tool properties. Basically the same thing we have here in the top bar. Uh, it was, um, or in the old T panel, they were part of this tool um, editor. This editor was just added as a test and uh, this tab is proven to be um, very useful. So it was added to the properties editor. So it's all combined here. Of course, it makes this a lot longer, but the plan is to have these buttons up here vertically. So it's gonna be less of an, of an issue. It's gonna be easier. And then we can make this a bit wider. We can put it here. And then we still have the single column layout still working, but we can include more of this in the future and uh, organize them a bit better with tabs. Um, so you can scroll through them and all of that good toolbar stuff. Speaking of the top bar, this week there have been a few documents that have been updated by Willem uh, explaining more of the, the future of the top bar. There has been discussions going on and the uh, agreement for the time being, which is gonna be tested, is that the top bar is really great for like um, showing familiar, like in a familiar interface, the tools for, especially for new users or for add-ons to add things there. But Blender should be, Blender should be, should be possible to use Blender without it. Like you shouldn't need to have it all the time there. So the idea is that uh, the tools that when, you, when you're not using it, you could hide the top bar and then use the tools from here or of course from the side. So when you choose a, a tool, particular tool, you could show the options right here. You could pin it as well. And for example, um, you could uh, have like a tool properties and then on the top, it will show the tools that your, your active tool that you have. That's something that is being uh, tested on. And with that, um, more things were <laughs> introduced. So if we are not showing the last operator up here, where do we show them? Well, in the viewport. That could be another topic that it could be um, research is adding some of the features that were shown in the F6, for example, when you do a, when you do an operation, they could be shown in the viewport up here. Oh, and the camera just died. So I'm gonna just cut off the camera and you're gonna listen to me like if it was a radio show, a Blender radio show. And so the tools that are, are there, it would allow us to actually even, if we don't have the top bar, Blender should still be useful. So then why not having it again <laughs> in the viewport? So then the problem of having the, the, the mode switching in the viewport is that it would, it would make the, the interface jump all the time. So in Blender 2.7, when you change modes, you see the buttons all jump around and that's distracting. So in 2.8, um, if we could align some of the settings to the other side, then it means that it, the jumping wouldn't bother that much because the menus jump anyway um, in two point, well, in any version basically because all the menu and this these menus and the mode switching basically change the way the, the, the amount of options that we have available. So it's okay that it jumps around. But on one side of the screen, we could leave the options that are not going to jump around, which is the shading and the overlays. So it will be basically splitting the scene, the, the viewport in two. All the tools on one side that depend on the mode, the tools depend on the mode, the sub modes and the menus, all of this depends on the mode. 
and all of the left is doesn't jump around because it it's always there it's for the view so view on the one side tools on the other side that, that's something to be um, tested on then um, I could keep going on but I think this video is already <laughs> long enough I just uh, wanted to to mention that there are topics that uh, people are trying to uh, uh, Talk about that, for example, what happened with add-ons? Where do we put them? Well, there is a document now where uh, there is these, um, the proposal of what could happen with the add-ons. The add-ons could also have their own active tools. They could also put things, put um, their own panels in the end uh, sidebar, for example, or also in their own tools. Or something that will make a lot of add-on developers happy is that there could be custom editors defined by add-ons. Okay, that is huge. I just dropped a huge bomb here. So I think that it's all for <laughs> for now. It's uh, It's been a, a pretty hectic week. Next week will be even more hectic because there is not only the, all the 2.8 things going on, but also some of us are going to NSC for the um, uh, Annecy Festival, Animation Festival, we're going to be demoing Grease Pencil there that is really close to being merged officially. So that will be pretty fun. And I hope to make a video with Daniel Martinez Lara, director of um, Hero, open movie made with Grease Pencil. And also it's, it's been developing Grease Pencil for years now. So helping the developers. So yeah, that will be pretty interesting. And here's just playing around, showing off some of the awesome feet. Uh, blend file provided by Daniel Beistet. And that is all. What a long video. I think we're not showing my face makes me talk a little more. All right. Uh, go, go, play Download Blender Experimental from the Billbot. And uh, I will see you again. Hopefully, I can say a date, but yes, as soon as possible. Ciao.